Okay, uh, when we did integers, we worked through all the operations like adding, subtracting, multiplication, division. Now that we're working with rational numbers, uh, we're doing the same thing. We're going through all the operations, but we did multiplication and division first because with fractions, multiplication and division is actually easier than subtraction and addition. So in 1.11, we get to adding and subtracting rational numbers. And there's a little word problem there for you to think through. I'm going to let you do it on your own for a minute or two before going through it together. Uh, don't write anything. Does that make sense? Don't use, like, let's, let me use the space. You guys just think about it, see if you can figure out what you would do. So we have Brian has a Hershey's chocolate bar. He cuts it into five equal pieces and gives away two of the pieces. So think about what Brian has done. Think about a picture in your mind, maybe. Sherry also has a Hershey's chocolate bar. Same size, same shape, same kind. She cuts it into three equal pieces and gives away two of her pieces. So they're both giving away two pieces. Brian and Sherry decide to share what they have left equally. What fraction of the chocolate bar do they each get? So think about what's happening there. Okay, here we go. So the first thing you're going to want to do is box the question. What fraction of chocolate bar do they each get? And basically what that means is we're going to find out how much do they have together? How much together? Because they're going to share it. And then they're going to split it in half. We're going to divide by two. So they're going to share what they have. So we need to know how much they have together. And then we're going to divide by two. But that doesn't happen until we get to the end. So let's think about what's actually happening here. Let's draw Brian's chocolate bar. And let's draw Sherry's chocolate bar. So go ahead, use your space wisely, guys. Think about organizing it. I uh, kind of organize it the same way I have. They have the exact same chocolate bar. How many parts does Brian's chocolate bar get split into? Five. So we'll try to do five as equally as you can. And how many parts does Sherry's chocolate bar get split into? Thirds. So we've got three pieces. So right off the bat, you can see that the pieces are not all the same size. How many pieces is Brian giving away? Two. He's going to give away two of them, which means he's going to have how many left? Three. Three. He's going to have three fifths left over. So here's Brian's chocolate bar. These guys are gone. He has three fifths left over. What about Sherry? How much does one she much. have? One third. Oh. She has half of what he has. Wow. So it looks like that if you're looking at the picture, but that is not true. Oh. Okay, she does not have exactly half of what Brian has, but you can see that they don't have the same number of pieces and they don't have the same amount of chocolate left. Okay, so now we need to get into how much do they have together. So they've given away and now they're going to get together and we need to find out how many they have. Well, what's the operation in math that we use to find out how much you have together? Minus. You add things together. So Brian has three fifths and Sherry has one third. Now when we were doing this, uh, when you guys took your guesses, you thought about it and you took your guesses, not a single person came up with the exact right answer. Which leads me to believe we're not quite sure how we should be adding these fractions. Can I add fifths and thirds? No. It doesn't make any sense. So I need to find a common denominator. So right here, we're going to write find a common denominator. And I, would, I wouldn't write all the way across because we actually need that space. Denominator. So this is going to be, what's our common denominator going to be? 15. 15. And in, in order to keep each rational number in equivalent form, if I do something to the denominator, I need to do the same thing to the numerator. So to get from 5 to 15, I multiplied by 3. So what's my numerator going nine, to be? Nine. It's going to be 9. 3 times 3 is 9. Now in my next fraction, I don't have to do the same thing, I just have to get to the same denominator. So in this case, I'm going to take 3, multiply it by 5, which means I have to take 1 and multiply it by 5, 
which means when they share, they're going to be sharing fifteenths, and together they're going to have fourteen fifteenths. So if we go back and think about, okay, how did we split up our rational numbers? Basically, let's look at Brian's chocolate bar. We divided each into fit. We divided it into fifteenths, which means each of these became thirds. And then you can see that you have nine fifteenths. Wow. Same thing with Sherry. We needed to get fifteenths. We need to divide each of these by fifths, which is a bit more mm -hmm. difficult, but there you go. And you can see that you have one third turns into five fifteenths. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now we're sharing fifteenths. You just need to count all of the ones that are orange, which is nine plus five of them is fourteen fifteenths. Is this our final answer? Okay, so we need them still to share, so they're each getting, they're each getting what? Well, they're starting with 14 fifteenths of the chocolate bar, and in order to share, they're going to divide it by two. They're each going to get half of this. Don't, don't you have to do the reciprocal now? So now we're bringing in what we learned in the last lesson about multiplying by the reciprocal. And now we are doing multiplication of rational numbers. It's straightforward. It's just top times top over bottom times bottom. Wait, the reciprocal of... Oh, never mind. Oh, my God. Never yeah. oh, wow. Two, the reciprocal of two. Two is two over one, so the reciprocal is one half. And can this fraction be reduced? No. Yes. yes. You can divide by three. By two. by two. They're both even numbers, so I can easily divide by two. And then if there's more, I can think about that after, but... You could. Seven fifteenths. Okay? Now, this is one way to think about it. Uh, another way to think about it, which I think is a little bit more straightforward, is that if you have a pile of pieces and there's 14 of them, how many does each person get of the 14 seven. pieces? Watch, they're each going to get seven of the fifteenths. Okay? And it's a word problem, so how do we have to do our answer, our final answer? Brian and Sherry together are getting 7 over 15. Well, not, not together. Brian and Sherry will each get 7 fifteenths of a chocolate bar. So there we have it. Let's quick review the steps that we took. Okay, We thought about our word problem. My problem solving strategy was to draw a picture of the situation, then represent it algebraically. Three fifths of Brian's plus one third of Sherry's. Whenever we're adding and subtracting fractions, we need a common denominator. If my common denominator is 15, I need to do the same to the numerator as I did to the denominator. So 5 times 3 was 15, so I have to do 3 times 3. Same with Sherry. To get to 15, I did times 5. Therefore, in the numerator, I also had to multiply by 5. That wasn't the final answer, though. They're still going to share it. In order to share anything with two people, you divide by 2. If they were sharing with three people, we would have divided by 3. Four people, we would have divided by 4 to get equal pieces. Dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So we ended up with 14 over 30, which reduced to 7 fifteenths. Brian and Sherry will each get 7 fifteenths of a chocolate bar. We finish every word problem with a statement, a final answer in a sentence. Okay, so we've mentioned it a few times already, but now we're going to take a note on it. And your little sentence there is, in order to add fractions, each number must be expressed in... And you're going to write in a common an equivalent form, an equivalent form, each having the same denominator. Do you ever end up having that they don't have the same denominator? If they don't have the same denominator, you cannot add them. 
Whenever you're adding and subtracting, you must have a common We've denominator, this question, and you know. can always find a common denominator, okay? There will always be able to be found a common denominator. In brackets here, we're going to just note that this is known as common denominator. Sometimes you'll see it, and I'll just write CD, okay? Common denominator. Okay, in the next little exercise, you have A, B, C, D, and it's not asking you to solve. It's not asking you to actually get the final answer. It's simply asking you to express each of the problems using equivalent forms with common denominators. So if we're adding 3 fourths to negative 7 eighths, I can't do that just straight off the bat. I need a common denominator. So between 8 and 4, what is their lowest common multiple? Eight. Their eight. lowest common multiple is 8, so that's going to be the common denominator. Well, my first guy is already in that form, so I can just rewrite it, negative 7 over 8. And now our second fraction, we want it also to be represented as a fraction over 8. What's my numerator going six. to be? The numerator is going to be 6, because in order to get to an 8 in the denominator, I had to take 4, multiply it by 2. I need to do the same thing to the numerator in order to create an equivalent form. So that's done. Now we could add those together, but you're not asked to, so let's carry on. Yep. Does the denominator change? This one did. Like, no, but when you're adding, does it become 16 no. or it stays 8? Uh, you're adding eighths. So you're adding eighths together. You have a chocolate bar, it's split into eighths. Some eighths here, some eighths there, and you're adding them together. So how many eighths do you have at the end? Okay, so this one would be negative seven plus six. It would be negative one eighth. Okay, because this is a negative plus a positive. Yes. Um, what if you're actually doing a question you have a negative plus a positive? Do you get the same way you do with integers? Exact same as you would do with integers, yep, just like we had here. So I would think of this as uh, being negative 7. So I'm to the left of 0 over here at negative 7. And I'm going to add 6. So do I get past 0? No, I don't. I get all the way up to negative 1. So I have negative 1 8. Okay, so think of it the same way as integers. Let's try B, guys. We've got 5 over 3 minus 1 over 2 can't add or subtract thirds and halves, so I need to convert these into an equivalent form using a common denominator. Can you think of a common denominator between 3 and 2? 12. Six. We could use 12. The easier one is 6. So in order to get 3 into 6, I needed to multiply by 2. So 5 times 2 is 10 sixths. And here we have 1 half, which converts into 3 sixths. And that's done. We don't need to finish it out. Problem C. 4 sevenths plus 1 third. 21. Common denominator 12. is 21. Plus 7 21. So here we have to multiply by 3, giving us 12 21 ths. And uh, here we have to multiply by 7, giving us 7 over 21. Good. And D. I'm going to just do right here. 52 over 100 minus 26 over 50. Common denominator? Uh, yeah, there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could either go up to 100, multiplying the numerator and denominator by 2, or look at this. These are both even numbers. So I could actually reduce this to 26 over 50 minus 26 over 50 okay again looking for a common denominator and whatever you do to get that denominator you have to also do to the numerator and then you can do your problem which is what we're going to do in the next uh, next section says to actually simplify which means we're going to get a final answer using the strategy we just practiced so the first question is actually the same Negative 7 eighths plus 3 over 4. Common denominator? 8. eight so we've got negative 7 over, eight, over 8 plus what over 8 in the second one? Negative 3. Oh. 
Six? Six, seven, eight. And, then eight. and now again, we're just thinking of it. We've got negative seven eighths, and we're adding six eighths. So we're starting Wait, on you do this side. No, nope, you don't. Oh. You're starting on this side of zero. We're going to add six eighths. It's going to bring us all the way to negative one. So we have negative one eighth. And again, with this negative sign, you can attach it to the one. You can leave it out in front. You just can't leave it in the denominator. It all means the same thing. This is negative one eighth. It's close to zero, not quite zero. Convert it into a decimal, it would be negative 0 0.125. But we're leaving our answers in rational fraction form. Okay? B says negative three minus one over two thirds. You can think of this two different ways. You can either do deal with the whole numbers first and then the fraction part. Uh, we're going to convert it all into rational numbers in improper form. So negative 3 is the same as what? 2 over 1. Negative 3 over 1. And negative 1 and 2 thirds. Well, we know we're, oh, sorry. We know we're dealing with thirds. How many thirds do we have? We have five thirds, right? We have a whole group of three plus two more, five thirds. And now we think about our common denominator. I can't add or subtract these quite yet. So what's our common denominator going to be? It can be three, right? This one's already represented as a fraction over three. And this one can be. I just have to multiply top and bottom by three. Give me negative nine in the numerator, three in the denominator. Now we have negative 9 thirds minus 5 more thirds. So again, if you're not set on this, you think about your number line. You're down here at negative 9 over 3, and you're going to move to the left 5 more thirds. So you're really just starting at negative 9 minus 5. You've got negative 14 thirds. Can that be reduced? No, it cannot. Your practice problems are found on page 146. They are numbers 1 through 3 and 14 through 31. And remember, I'm going to check all of your homeworks tomorrow, so make sure you're catching up. Also, take a look at your quiz and make sure you double-check any of the common mistakes on your quiz.